My name is Sham Kalvakar. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon and I run a London practice clinic. And I have a quite a large experience of uh, treating children and adults in pectus excavatum. Uh, pectus, pectus is just a chest. Pectus excavatum is as we know as a funnel chest where there's a dip in a chest and a pectus carinatum is popularly known as a pigeon chest. It's a part of the similar deformity where uh, when your chest is growing up, there is a breastbone in the middle and a cartilage on the side. As you grow, they should grow in synchrony. But in some, some time in children or while you're growing, this is, it becomes dyssynchronous. There is nothing as a gene marker for why it is, but it's a very common familiar occurrence. So when the, your ribs are pushing it, sometimes they can push the breastbone down and that's called pectus excavatum, that means funnel chest. Sometimes they push the breastbone forward, then it's called pectus carinatum, there's a pigeon chest. You can have a combination of these deformities up and down, and these are also associated with the scoliosis, uh, and that can be part and parcel of it. In a small percentage of patients, they could have a problem like a Marfan syndrome or Elhas danlos syndrome, where you get a connective tissue disorders. Yes, I think uh, the pectus excavatum causes, uh, it is unknown, but it's a developmental. My personal feeling is it could be a, some sort of a, a message vector, which, which supposed to, it's like a, when you're shunting a train into parking mode, there is always this uh, buffer which stops the train going forward. It's a similarly when you're growing it, there should be a negative signal from the ribs and the cartilage in the bone to, uh, to sternum and ribs to align, but sometimes that is missing. And my hypothesis is there is either a viral or developmental, some sort of a uh, disruption of this message. And that's why they, they keep growing and causes you either a bulge or a depression. They can be quite symptomatic because imagine if your, if your chest is like normal chest is like that. And when it becomes like that, the area under there is less. So your lung will have a less space to expand. So pectus excavatum, fine, they can't do exercise anymore or they get tired, short of breath. And sometimes it presses on a heart, shifts your heart to the left side and can cause leaky valves or it can also cause uh, low blood pressure in some patients and sometimes you get irregular heartbeats. I have patients who can have a blackouts because of the pressure on the heart or sometimes get irregular heartbeats. They can also have a chest pain. They can have a problem with the posture, backache, mm -hmm. and especially with the carinatum, they could have a problem with aesthetically looking bad and also with the pain. And often in some people, we yeah. see that, imagine a young adult growing up and he has a chest which has these problems. Can you imagine taking out the shirt in front of your peers in the PE or a swimming pool? It's always depressing. So what happens is if you're very worried about the pain and you, aesthetic is your, uh, your, you're looking for, sometimes we can do the implants. There is a, a company called Anatomica, which designs the, we take a CT scan and send it to them. We design with a, a digital printing, we print silicone uh, implant and the model fits this patient. And this can be useful for other syndromes like a Poland syndrome, where you have a lack of pectoralis muscle. We can replace this with the silicone, which is a natural quality. If you feel it under the skin, it looks like a muscle, it feels like muscle. We make a small incision and we put this implant and it stays, there's a beautiful implant, gives you chest outside looking absolutely normal. Skeletally, we are not corrected it, but it works well for that person less pain and aesthetically looks good if that is the only aesthetic is only issue. There is another device called pectus up. Some people worry that there is a bar underneath their sternum and pressing on their heart. So we can put a little uh, titanium plate above and pull the sternum towards it. And it's called pectus up. We do few of them, it's slowly coming up. We can use that for pectus excavatum. I always say this, Treatment of this may not be life-saving, but it's life-changing for this young adult 
who are going to be a future for our countries, and they want to be confident. When you present yourself with something like that and all the discussion with your kids and all, having with your chest is not always good for patients. And I see some people get affected psychologically. They get depressed, introvert, uh, introvert and sometimes they have a problem of communication, uh, socializing with people. I had a patient who uh, was so introvert and he couldn't even take a shirt off in front of mother. And I could see the pain between both of them. And after the surgery, he was my first patient. After the surgery, he didn't come with a mom. He came with a girlfriend and he was barely wearing a shirt. So I realized that this is the best thing I did for this young man. So I feel the treatment is very important for these young adults. Okay, there are non-surgical. Previously, there was only one traditional operation. We call it Ravi, Ravich operation, where you cut in the middle and take out all the cartilages and lift the chest up or push the chest down in a carinatum. And it was been traditionally done. We all trained to do that for some time. But uh, now there are different non-surgical treatment. One of them is called braces. Uh, we, like you put a braces on a teeth, we put a sort of braces. There are traditionally several braces. We use one called Tijo, which come from US. We take a 3D image of the patient chest and design the braces specifically for that patient. We put it on your chest. There's a front piece and a back piece, and they gradually keep pressing on your chest and reduce your carinatum to normality. And it takes between uh, up to nine months to a year, but within three months, you see the results in depression. And it works well uh, people who are under 18 because they're still growing and the cartilage is supple. We do a, something called pressure test. If it pressure and dip goes down, the braces work very well. Then you get something called rib flaring, where you have a margin of your ribs are flaring. We can put braces for them too, and that works. Uh, for pectus excavatum, braces may not have a good results, but there is something called vacuum bell. If you're a younger child, like around 12, 10, 15, or up to around 15, 16, you put a bell, vacuum bell on, which sucks, the, which lies side of the, your depression and sucks and lifts up your depressed sternum and you have to wear it up to four hours a day. And if you do that, it can reduce the depression. It may not totally eliminate, but it's a good way of treating early time so that eventually the deformity may not be that severe. There are exercises, swimming, uh, stretches like Pilates. There are several exercises we, we teach our patients to beforehand, which can get your sternum working well with the breathing exercises. If you do that in a younger age, then the depression may not get severe. Uh, yes, I think if you are under 40, we can do NUS procedure, which is I recommend because it's a keyhole surgery where we design a bar specific for that person and we introduce with the telescope and the bar is twisted so that chest is pushed for instantly. It's a quite a magical moment when you see the sternum going up and if it, it's much more less invasive and we can put up to one to three bars that uh, works well and it, children it works really well. Uh, in adult sometimes you may have to do the ravage. If you're above 40 the, your rib cage is very sturdy and uh, fixed and calcified. There you have to take out the cartilages to elevate the sternum and put either a bar or a mesh underneath. So there is a difference. Children have very little brain uh, issues and they recover very well. The, uh, if you're a more muscular, older you are, the pain factor is uh, sometimes severe. And often we have to put multiple bars in the adults so that they can be third because ch child is up to 30, 40 kilo, but it's where you could be 100 kilo man, then you may require two, three uh, bars so that they can take a pressure. These bars are made out of steel, stainless steel, and they have a strength, but you have to test the strength. In people who have an issue with uh, uh, allergy uh, to nickel, sometimes we use a titanium bar. They are much more pricey and difficult to fabricate through the company and the bending maneuvering, but otherwise in people who have allergic to nickel or the steel, we can use a titanium bar. Uh, 